everybody for coming for the first session. So we're starting out um, with something that's a nod to the great chain of being that is starting with fishes and moving up tetrapods through this conference. Although I prefer to think of it as starting at the apex of vertebrate evolution and moving downhill from there. Especially with regards to this first talk by Joe Keating and his colleagues, early Cambrian astrachoderms and the trials and tribulations of total evidence dating because jawless fishes are actually the best fishes. Hi everyone, I agree, hence the t-shirt. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, I'm Joe Keating, I'm going to be talking today about trials and tribulations of uh, total evidence dating. Uh, so uh, almost all living vertebrates are jawed vertebrates and they're distinguished from their uh, jawless cousins, the cyclostomes, by a suite of uh, morphological characters including jaws, a mineralized skeleton, paired fins, a differentiated gut, and paired olfactory bulbs. Uh, and this gulf separating the jawless vertebrates from the jawed vertebrates is entirely an artifact of extinction. So if we want to understand the evolution of jawed vertebrates, we must, uh, our only recourse is the fossil record. Uh, so fortunately there's a a uh, plethora of jawless and jawed vertebrate fossils from the Paleozoic, including uh, these guys, the pteraspidomorphs, which include uh, uh, the pteraspids, uh, cyathaspids, tessellate forms from the Ordovician, like astraspis, and uh, armoured forms from the Ordovic Ordovician, uh, arandaspids, like sacambambaspis. Uh, the anaspids, which come in armoured forms and naked, Thelodonts, which come in deep body, uh, flat-bodied forms like Loganellia and deep-bodied forms like Fucacorda. Galliaspids, which can be divided into the eugalliaspids with their slit-like uh, nasohypophysial, and polybranchiaspids with the more oval-shaped duct. Osteostracans, the conventional ones like Xenaspis uh, with their corneal spines, uh, smooth, streamlined ones like Dartmuthia, and hemicyclaspis and its uh, relatives, where the pectoral fins uh, attach directly to the head shield. And placoderms, which come in a variety of uh, different morphologies and share with nathostomes characters including jaws, uh, vertebrae, and paired pelvic fins. So uh, phylogenetic analyses over the last 30 years have suggested that ostracoderms and placoderms uh, comprise a paraphyletic series of sister lineages uh, related by degree to the jawed vertebrates. Uh, so these relationships are weakly supported but are absolutely fundamental to our understanding of uh, the assembly of the jawed vertebrate body plan, whether this, uh, the character acquisition was stepwise or a burst of morphological evolution. Uh, the evolutionary, uh, evolutionary developmental origin of important jawed vertebrate characters, such as bone, uh, a complex brain, paired fins. And also, the, uh, these fossils give us the time scale of vertebrate evolution. Uh, however, despite all this, there are two major caveats to this uh, classic hypothesis of vertebrate evolution. Firstly, each of the putative stem nathostem uh, clades is highly diverse in its own right. Uh, recent studies uh, by uh, Brazo, Giles, and others have suggested that placoderms uh, form a para uh, in fact comprise a paraphyletic grade uh, related by degree to the jawed vertebrates. And this has important implications for our understanding of character evolution uh, in this part of the tree. Uh, the second caveat is that almost all of these analyses have been done using parsimony, and a number of recent studies have cast doubt on uh, whether parsimony is accurate. Uh, they, these studies, using simulated data, have instead suggested, uh, advocated the use of Bayesian techniques. Uh, and Bayesian does have some advantages over parsimony. Uh, unlike parsimony, uh, Bayesian allows for co-estimation of time and topology meaning that you can take fossil stratigraphic distribution into account when estimating the autopology. So with that in mind, I set out uh, to 
test the classic hypothesis of vertebrate evolution, and I wanted to answer uh, three questions. Uh, does the stem, uh, does the stem hypothesis withstand testing using Bayesian methods? Are the various clades of ostracoderms monophyletic? And are non-clock and clock analyses, so the analyses where we don't take into account the stratigraphic distribution versus those that we do, uh, are those analyses congruent? Uh, so moving on to methods. Uh, first, I uh, compiled a number of important uh, early vertebrate uh, phylogenetic studies, uh, including osteichthians, osteostracans, uh, galeaspids, uh, thelodonts, uh, anaspids, uh, cyathaspids and teraspids, and uh, cyclostomes. However, uh, compiling these uh, different uh, character matrices in, uh, caused a number of character conflicts. So for instance, uh, here we have uh, jawed vertebrate characters for the pineal organ. We have uh, pineal uh, foramen, so the organ is open and the pineal organ is covered by dermal bone. However, in, if we include the teraspids, they have a uh, third state where the pineal is covered by a transparent window of dentine capped by enamel. Uh, and this is within a separate pineal plate. So I uh, invoked contingent characters uh, in all of these cases, following the um, recommendations in Brazo 2009. So in this example, we have uh, the anchor character, so pineal, ab pineal organ absent, pineal present, and some two contingent characters based on the presence of the pineal organ. So pineal organ uh, relation to dermal skull roof with three states, and whether a pineal plate is present or absent. And after exhaustively going through the character list, uh, I ended up with uh, a character matrix of 266 taxa and 560 characters. Uh, and this includes two invertebrate chordate outgroups, the branchiostoma uh, and tunicata. So moving on to results, and this is the 50% majority rule consensus summarizing the posterior distribution of trees under the non-clock model. Uh, so let's have a look at this in a bit uh, more detail. So at the base, we have uh, the teraspidomorphs as a paraphyletic uh, uh, assemblage of stem vertebrates. Uh, higher up in the tree, we have a polytomy of anaspids, naked and armored, thelodonts, which come out as a clade, uh, and monophyletic cyclostomes. Moving up the tree, we have a paraphyly of galeaspids. Uh, osteostracans are recovered as a monophyly. However, uh, the resolution within this group uh, falls apart. And further up the tree, things are looking a bit more familiar. We have a paraphyletic grade of uh, placoderms at the base of jawed vertebrates with osteichthians and chondrichthians. So I wanted to test uh, the uh, monophyly of the different clades of early vertebrates uh, using a Bayesian uh, Bayes, Bayes factor analysis. So we got significant results for uh, the osteostracans and thelodonts, these clades are accepted under Bayes factor uh, analysis. Uh, however, we also uh, rejected uh, placoderms, teraspidomorph, and anaspid monophyly uh, under Bayes factor. So moving on to the clock analysis, uh, this is the result. Uh, so we have uh, under a clock analysis model using the fossilized birth death model, which incorporates estimation of speciation, extinction, and sampling of fossil and living species. Uh, so each fossil was assigned a uniform distribution based on uh, radiometric metric ages. Uh, and these are estimates for the stage or stages that uh, the fossils are found in. And this is the topology we recover. So we get uh, monophyletic agnathans sister group to um, monophyletic jawed vertebrates. Uh, and the origin of skeletonizing vertebrates, we dated to the early Ediacaran, which means that uh, we can expect a scene like this with teraspids swimming around all these rangiomorphs uh, deep in the Ediacaran. 
This is insane, obviously. <laughs> uh, utterly insane. Uh, so not least because uh, the gap between the earliest fossil and the origin of skeletonizing and the estimated origin of skeletonizing vertebrates is over 200 million years. Uh, and considering that the skeleton is a ready-made fossil, uh, this, this scale of gap is just inconceivable. So instead, I used a two-step approach whereby uh, first we did a molecular clock analysis using a uh, uh, protein matrix of 27,000 sites uh, modified from Delsuc et al. 2006. Uh, and this is the result of that. Uh, we then took the age estimates from uh, the Delsuc uh, analysis uh, and used these as minimum and maximum hard constraints uh, on the uh, morphological partition. So in other words, this analysis is identical to the previous one, apart from it incorporates uh, prior information about the divergence of clades uh, from the molecular clock. And unsurprisingly, we get uh, more realistic uh, age estimates, although there's still a 70 million year gap between uh, the estimated origin of skeletonizing vertebrates uh, and the first fossil. Uh, here we get some uh, early vertebrates jawless vertebrates as stem nathostomes and others as stem cyclostomes. Again, we tested these with uh, base factor analyses to test competing hypotheses of vertebrate evolution. Uh, all of these were analyzed again using the FBD model. And base factor analysis uh, uh, of the competing hypotheses strongly rejects classic stem nathostome hypothesis. Uh, I also find strong support for rejecting pteraspidomorphs uh, as stem group nathostomes, uh, which was suggested by, uh, sorry, as stem group vertebrates, which was su suggested by the previous analysis. So back to the questions. Does the stem nathostome hypothesis withstand testing using Bayesian mod methods? No. We don't find the classic hypothesis uh, in either clock or non-clock. Bayesian analysis. Are the various groups of ostracoderms uh, monophyletic? Yes and no. So in both clock and non-clock, we find thelodonts and osteostracans as monophyletic. However, uh, pteraspidomorphs are, in both analyses, uh, found as paraphyletic. And are non-clock and clock analyses congruent? No. Uh, the position of some of these groups, in, uh, crucially the pteraspidomorphs, uh, moves around uh, a great deal. So this has some important implications for our understanding of uh, vertebrate evolution as a whole. Uh, firstly, it's possible that we have uh, stepwise character acquisition, as has previously been suggested by the classic hypothesis of vertebrate evolution. But it is also possible that the skeletonless, jawless fishes alive today, the hagfishes and the lampreys, arose from a skeletonizing ostracoderm ancestor and, so, and independently lost their skeleton. Uh, clock analyses suggest that these important divergences occurred much earlier than we have thought previously, uh, and this implies that there may be some missing fossil record. So uh, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>